debate. So, we're going to dissect the debate, talk about politics, and everything else from a Pan-African perspective. So let's make it happen. intro, everything's working. I'm going to start off by saying that the phones are open and will be opened throughout today's episode. 312-985-7834. So you can call in uh, from anywhere in the world and you can build on what I've established and what I'm talking about. Back in both. Or you can come with your own topic and uh, share your own insights and get my feedback, critical feedback. But anyway, we had the, the last presidential deba debate. Um, I said that I was going to watch it because, you know, it was the last one before Armageddon. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, it was... It was it was everything America deserves. This is a representative uh, republic. It has democratic elements, but it's essentially the, the, this is a nation governed by laws, not by the whim of the majority, but by the laws agreed upon and negotiated and legislated by the majority or by the majority's representatives, their elected representatives. So it's actually a republic with democratic aspects or elements. There's also dictatorial elements in this republic. But one thing I can say is that in this election, it fully represents the spirit of America. These two candidates, where you have polished elitists who are entrenched and serve the status quo, they were racist, but they've seen the light, and so they took their racism underground. And so they had this unifying uh, rhetoric. They have this uh, inclusive rhetoric. They have this rhetoric that makes their victims of their racist aggression feel comfortable around them, even encourage and support them. And then you have blatant, naked, fascistic, white nationalist racists. Which is so representative of America. You can't, I don't understand why people are so up in arms about this election. This is one of the few election cycles where I think the majority, which is democracy, majority rules. A lynch mob is democratic. I don't think there's anything inherently good about democracy. I know we're told that it's something inherently good. And U.S. democracy was never meant for the masses of the people. Remember, the founding fathers, white landed males, rapists, enslavers, colonizers, invaders, they meant to have democracy amongst themselves. You and your crew get together and say, we'll all have a vote and everybody outside this circle be damned. But anyway, I think that this election cycle represents, you know, liberal fascism and naked right-wing cartoonist fascism, which is what America has always been about. And I think this is best represented because Obama was able to get a Nobel Peace Prize. And even Obama admitted, I don't know why I got this Nobel Peace Prize. I'm a warmongering, corporatist, center left, which means far right, really. But he even admitted, I don't know why they gave me the Nobel Peace Prize. But Obama was able to keep the cloak of fairness, democracy, mass participation, representative democracy. Bush, he ripped the cloth, the, 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 the covering. Actually, I would say uh, Bush's father and Bill Clinton were able to maintain the, cl the cloth somewhat. Um, but Carter actually tried to mend the cloth. Bush ripped the cloth. Trump 
totally just took uncovered America. America is a red state. America is a Republican. What the values and ideas of the Republicans represent all. The only reason you have Democrats is because Democrats feel that in order to achieve the ultimate goals of the Republicans, they should be less blatant about it. They should be more tactful about it. They should be more sensitive in how they word things. But the Democrats do essentially the same thing. It's all status quo maintenance, status quo legitimation, status quo reinforcement. But let's talk about it. And these integrationists, that's why I can't really get with integrationists, because you're a winner and a loser at the same time. Like Dr. King said, you're integrating into a sinking ship or burning house. Either way, either analogy works. So even if, you, if you're an integrationist, a reformist, even when you win, you lose. In fact, the more you win, the, de the, the, the more you lose. So I like, if I'm going to fight for something, even if it's a fantasy, I'm going to fight for something that if I secure it, it's going to be what I actually want. I don't want to eat, enter a feces eating contest. Because when you win that feces eating contest, you're somewhat a loser as well because you've ate the most feces. And so you do get the feces eating crown, but at the same time, you're full of feces. And that's what integrating into a corrupt, racist, capitalist, imperialist, all the ist and isms. All the worst isms and ist that humanity has ever conceptualized, nationalism, are embedded here. And there are some good things, like phones, some witty comedy shows, you know, the internet. There's good things that come out of this system, but it's so much suffering because, you know, internet, great. But then all the instruments that we use to access the internet are, number one, eco ecocidal. They, they, they emit toxic substances into our environment, into our bodies, our fatty tissue absorbs these, and then you got coltan, mercury, lead that is extracted not following any type of uh, environmental protocols because they're extracting them from places like the Congo and now Afghanistan where they found, I mean, just a, a mother load of, of, of rare earths and precious minis minerals. So all the, even when you can identify the good, it's still uh, a tied to just really some, some pure misery. So anyway, but this is the debate show, right? We're just going to focus on the debate. I'm going to first share with everyone some highlights from the debates. Okay, here's one of the, some of the most profound words that came out of the uh, Trump-Clinton, bring them to Hillary Clinton debate. You know, or was this is what I heard as I listened. All right, yes, yeah, some insightful exchange going on there. And I don't even know. Very insightful. But let's be for real. Let, let's see. What did the, uh, the leaders, the, the potential leaders of the so-called free white world Let's see, what, I'm going to stop playing with y'all. Let's see what, what, what they had to say to, to America, to the world, and to each other. Oh, and I think Hillary Clinton, I think she said uh, infinity first, therefore she, she is the uh, winner. Okay, now I'm going to stop messing with y'all. Let's uh, see what these two proto-fascists and active fascists had to say to each other and to America. And then we'll come back with, with my uh, I, uh, assessment. I was against it once it was finally negotiated and the terms were laid out. I wrote about that in... You called it the gold I standard. About, well, I you called I, it the gold standard of trade deals. Ooh, Hillary's a liar. You've ever seen it. No. And then you heard what I said about it and all of a sudden you were against it. Ooh, Hillary and Clinton's a li they some liars. Oh my God, why are you always lying? Lord have his mercy. And why they put that brother in front of these two fascists? That's 
That's a nice suit uh, Hillary's wearing. If she had a couple little devil horns coming up, it'd be totally complete that outfit. Blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. And that's from the old one. I, I mean, the last one was even more despicable. I, I, I'm just telling y'all what I got. Let's deal with the issues from the most recent. The third debate, right? Um, first, the biggest controversy, the largest controversy that's gotten everyone in a tizzy is the fact that Trump announced that he would not accept the results of the election if he lost because he says the U.S. elections are rigged. And around the, 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 the Beltway or all over Washington, all through the Republican and Democratic Party, there was a collective gasp. Like, how dare he question our democracy? The integrity of the American democracy. And everybody, and even uh, uh, Uncle Obama came out and said, uh, we, what the, the most, um, the, the strongest standing political tradition in America is the peaceful transition of power between parties, which makes America stand out as a model for all other democracies and all other nations. And here's the ironic thing. U.S. elections are rigged. But the problem is, and what's I think got all these uh, pasty, uh, balding, male pattern baldness Republicans all spooked out is, it's the Republicans that do the rigging. And because you have two forms of fraud. You have voter fraud and election fraud. Voter fraud is basically when an individual voter goes into the booth and votes in a place that they're not supposed to vote, vote uh, therefore voting outside their district, which would allow them to vote for certain candidacies or certain policies that they have, are not eligible to vote. Someone voting uh, under another person's name, things of that nature. I mean, I mean really, the numbers uh, is approaching, what, half a billion people in this country. I mean, this country is a large country. And even though many uh, of the racists um, many of the win on pretty razor thin margins. One person voting twice or voting where you shouldn't, that's really rarely decides an election. Because, because nationwide it's illegal and you're going to do two to five years. Uh, federal incarceration for to do something that is really a waste of your I don't know why. Can't blame me. But anyway, it's just very rare. There was a polling company that looked at and they were able to find one instance of voter fraud where there was a European immigrant who worked and decided to vote Republican. And so the only instance of found and prosecuted was a vote cast for the party Republicans. But I mean, hypocrisy has never slowed down entitled voter fraud is not a problem it's not an issue it's an invented false problems invented and always suggesting that black folks in the cities and illegal immigrants french illegal immigrants canadian illegal immigrants because you got a lot of illegal immigrants and to see them doing the perp walk when ice does it they never do ice raids at starbucks so, the only thing of fraud is election fraud. And election fraud versus voter fraud. Election fraud is for even a, a small conspiratorial cabal of voters. Election fraud, not uh, giving adequate polling stations, changing polling stations, not counting votes, giving uh, the, the e e electronic ballots, hacking the e-readers for, for voting.
It's extremely prevalent.